All right, welcome everybody. Happy Fourth of July in the uh, quest of the United States Commodity Exchanges, namely the CME, who has to be open on the Fourth of July. This is the abbreviated session. Uh, just because we're selling the Fourth of July doesn't mean other countries like say, oh, I don't know, the United Kingdom. You know, England doesn't really celebrate the whole Fourth of July thing with us here. Uh, <clears throat> that's why we started our own country. But in the meantime, this is uh, going to be an interesting month. The um, algo uh, strategy that I keep mentioning here on the ES does trade 24 hours. That's what I say. Uh, we keep it as a guide for our, our clients in the live trade room. But on this page, I want to focus on a couple things. This has been the trading range. I mean, we've caught on the SPY model a short. It's been in a trading range. And then the news keeps talking about these new highs that the S&P keeps making. Well, just as a reminder... We had a high on June 20th at approximately 549. Well, it's exactly 549.33. There it is, 550.12, excuse me. 550.12 was made on uh, June 20th, and we subsequently corrected, went down, went back up in a trading range, retested it unsuccessfully, next bar straight back down. The system went short. That was the last time you, we did an update and, and mentioned that we were this strategy was short. It got stopped out just on that brief new high that we saw with the excitement on the day before the shortened holiday, Wednesday, uh, July 3rd trade. All right, so it's flat and, and the whole strategy is flat. Everything's flat. The crude oil trade's flat at $83.5. Uh, the SQQ is flat. It went short, it covered the short. The ES has been trading uh, on the long side on the and, and just got out. Now, these little orange or yellow lines in the sand, those are the emergency stops when the market starts to move through them the market trails a stop underneath that line in the sand and therefore bang it just got executed on the on that little mini trade right there but here's the real focus we talked about end phase we talked about end phase or stocks that make new lows that have relative performance of volume improving in a bullish convergence pattern what we then look for is some kind of a buy signal and and we did we got one and the market not only did something unique it traded above the pivot point which is the blue line something I've been teaching for probably 30 years, easy. And uh, and that's why we have person's pivots indicator. Basically, if the market's supposed to be bullish, the market trades below the blue line, south of the pivot. And then you look for sell signals at resistance when the market's in a bullish phase. But now it seems that we've got maybe a little basing action here because no one's really selling the market. In, in, in other words, if this was going to have another new leg lower, immediately volume would be completely moving with trend leading prices almost right so that's one of the things we want to um look for uh, probably get maybe a, a move in end phase i'm thinking we got an easy pop the 103 105 in, in the coming weeks so uh at coming weeks in the next week or so a uh, few days we should see this as a swing trade and upside so let's take a look at some other things that uh, I wanted to cover advanced decline from the top down approach, looking at the S&P 500. This is a very rare occurrence that we see over and over and over again, the market just struggling with a few top selected names, driving and grinding the market higher. And the names are Amazon, Netflix, maybe a little bit of Tesla, which took over leadership, which we alerted you to upside um, movement and options on Tesla over the last week and a half. I think we did like three or four videos on Tesla. But um, apart from that, everything else is going not doing well. And, and when indexes go up and other stocks go down and the cumulative breadth of the market continues to go down, one of two things have got to happen. We're going to have to see participation in everything else or it's at one point the market will be vulnerable for a really bad overnight type of maybe lower one and a half, two percent lower open, which we haven't seen in quite some time. Or... A lot of people have to start taking money off out of T-bills. Uh, you know, they keep talking about money being on the sidelines. I don't think anyone's got money parked under the mattress at 5% uh, yield on, on treasuries, on short-term treasuries. In fact, people are putting money in the short-term treasuries. Even Warren Buffett says him before Charlie Munger, his partner, passed away this year, said me and Charlie would be the first ones in line at the treasury auction every Monday morning to buy. So, you know, Berkshire Hathaway is not in equities they're they claim they're in cash but they're not really in cash they're earning five percent which some stocks are you know you'd be better off having a five percent dividend yield so where are we going from here 
Bottom line is the month of July, everyone knows seasonally speaking, it gets a little patriotic bump in the first half, and then we start to see some declines. Now, if we don't get the um, advanced decline moving more in a positive direction, leading and supporting this new high, I, you know, I, I think that's why everyone's saying there's going to be a correction. The question is, at what day, hour, uh, minute is this going to happen? Uh, probably towards the end of the month. I mean, I think the market also has got something else it's addressing the fiscal policy changes. Who's going to be in the White House for the next four years? Bottom line, they are the ones who will have control of the old executive order book, right? And the pens and start changing things. And so if it's a Trump win, obviously there's going to be differences of, of what sectors might benefit. Uh, bottom line, we have a, um, a huge move and here's the big Tesla breakout. I mean, three days in a row, it's a little extreme. I, I suggest uh, this was a, a decent move, but bottom line, 250, 255-ish uh, resistance in here, right up against the monthly 250 number from, um, that was a high back in, oh, come on, John, here it is, January this year. That was a high, look, 251 and a quarter. So up in here, I'm thinking we may wanna look for some weekly put options to the downside, not this week expiration the following week or maybe two weeks out i think we we will get back to like a 218 220 this move was seemed to be a little bit more um inclined to be short covering and people either not in it or covering uh positions lots of people short tesla they didn't believe that tesla was going to do anything and so therefore it kind of had that over accelerated move so that would be from here we've been talking about getting long and being long in the newsletter our our trades in the newsletter were long um, I actually, uh, just to give you a, a, an update, we trailed our stop super duper tight and we got stopped out on Tesla. And for those that didn't trail their stop, uh, the call on the email alert was to get out of Tesla on the close. Good, bad, or indifferent, it's a nice move. We didn't buy the low, but I didn't sell the high, but I got a big, big old chunk in the middle and you guys were the beneficiaries of our analysis, hopefully, right? So that's uh, some of the stuff that we put out. Now, uh, moving forward this week, looking at scans, going into Monday, Friday's monthly unemployment report. To be honest with you, I really don't have anything uh, that's off the charts bullish for me. Our Arista Networks is pretty much a um, a, a, a starling sh skyrocket straight up into the, the stratosphere. Uh, it, it, it makes it hard to want to buy stuff like that when I see diminished volume trends. So when markets make new highs and volume doesn't correspond, I don't like chasing things like that. But I will say there is a, a trade now we could probably focus on, which has been a nemesis of mine, um, Newmont Mining. I, I mean, it's a nemesis because we bought it back in uh, the pandemic and we put a collar strategy on it. I think it was back over here. We put a collar strategy on it uh, ahead of, uh, in a, I think it was an earnings report or in the, and then the pandemic. And a collar strategy is you're long the stock on a breakout, which we took, you know, or any reason why you're long. We're long the stock, we sell upside calls, we bought, use that, finance that money of selling upside premium on calls to purchase downside put protection. So what happened when the market went down, the actual calls, because of implied volatility, it was so volatile, uh, implied volatility, just exploded the upside calls should have devalued on a tremendous decline in fact they didn't really move in fact they they actually went up so it made it impossible to buy back the short side of the calls and the puts you know you don't want to get out of those i didn't know if the stock was going to go to 17 bucks so we stayed with the trade got out of it with a profit don't get me wrong but man it just highest amount of inflation in our history since the 70s right and this is a mining company. Gold's trading the highest level um, in, in, well, price-wise in history. And, and Newmont Mining can't get back to its high. So it's a nemesis in that regards. So bottom line is I see a small opportunity. I don't really, there was a high closed doji. It may form some upside. I like this weekly pattern. It's more like a kind of a inverted shoulder, head, shoulder. Here's your neckline. I'm not a big fan of the volume not not supporting that move. So we need to either break the actual neckline, which is how you successfully trade Newmont mining or an inverted head and shoulders weight, be patient for it, and then look to see if there's corresponding volume. If the market's going to break out, look, volume should lead 
volume should lead prices to a new breakout. When prices break out, no volume, it's no bueno. But anyway, that 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 would be it to be watchful for. Uh, there really wasn't a whole lot of new trades setting up ahead of the monthly unemployment report. And and let's face it, I think everyone's going to have a, a very shortened uh, trading session on thin volume on Friday to begin with, unless the number is super, super strong or super, super weak. But I, I think the major focus of the market right now is, is Jay Powell, can he backtrack on his word and say, bottom line, we're going to lower interest rates anyway. Uh, and can he uh, successfully manipulate the, the Federal Reserve's policies that he's been saying and wavering between, oh, we're going to cut this year maybe three times. Oh, the numbers aren't good enough. The economy's too strong. And, you know, we're going to wait until, as he said this week at the ECB meeting in Spain um, or Portugal, excuse me. I mean, honestly, the guy's sitting there saying inflation, I don't even see it coming down at 2% until 2026. So I guess transitory is a, a, a different word in most people's vocabulary, right, Jay? But, um, the market, I think, is also trying to pr price in, and, and, and to be fair, the fiscal policy potential changes that are coming up with this year's election. Um, other than that, gang, I, I'll do another video over the weekend for us. Um, looking at the heads of the five families, they're getting a little, um, they're getting, again, markets that rally on, on, on weakening volume is not a strong conviction to chase these rallies. There might be a little bit more to the upside. Maybe we get the 460. But uh, what are the odds the market comes back to 448 and you buy it up here at 460 for a maybe $5 move and you get maybe a $20 break? So that seems to me about what the market is shaping up for risk reward. Last thing I want to mention is no one's really trading or paying attention to volatility. The VXX is the ETN that trades volatility. Volume is just non-present. Nobody's trading uh, in the VXX on the long side. The only thing I will say is that there is a starting to be a buildup in the September put options. And that's something to pay attention to because September options are well beyond the 30 day implied move that, uh, that the futures of volatility index VIX uh, is comprised. And, and this index being the ETN trades off the short term VIX futures. Uh, it sounds complicated, but bottom line is the VIX is based off supply demand or bid and ask or Demand for options in the SPX, uh, the, the SP 500 uh, puts and calls five strikes above and five strikes below uh, current values. So if anyone buys a lot and they're scared about increased volatility or downside move, they're going to buy options in the next 30 days. And that'll reflect demand, right, for puts and then send the VIX up. But if they're going out into even September, it might get underneath that radar is a little suspicion. So something to pay attention to. We're getting pretty cheap. Volatility can get cheaper. Don't get me wrong. But I think, you you know, starting to implement some hedging and, and watching some positions. This is a market that's moving up on A, thin air. Volume is not really phenomenal. And uh, B, we're also moving up on uh, weakening advanced decline numbers. So with that said, I will have um, a good celebratory uh, 4th of July and uh, remember the old phrase, he who drinks a fifth on the fourth will fail to go forth on the fifth. God bless, be good, and happy birthday, America, and happy 4th of July to you and your family, everyone. Thank you very much for listening. And if you like what we do here, give a thumbs up, put some comments in the comment box, some suggestions you'd want me to cover. I already had someone email me, they want me to do more in crypto, BTC, uh, and do um, more into uh, analyzing crypto. We put out a trade in crypto. Many of you guys may not remember this. It was Wolf, Terra Wolf. Uh, we pointed this out uh, probably, I don't know, it was back here around two bucks or so. And it keeps climbing. We did get out of position on a third of this. We raised our stop. So we're sitting here watching this thing just still maintain and manifesting higher values. So any pullbacks, you can see it opens lower. It can't even fill the gap. And... Um, Bottom line, we've seen that a lot. Markets taunt people. But at this point, if the market does close below this 450 in, in Terra Wolf, then I would suspect we're coming back down and filling that gap and give you guys who didn't participate in it or missed the opportunity to get in at a better price. Don't chase products. I don't care how good the opportunity. There's 9,000 stocks in this world of our universe. There's always a new company that comes in every once in a while. 
you know, so there's going to be opportunities. But if you buy a stock at the wrong price, price, you know, it's it's going to be a, a painful, long relationship if you buy a stock at the wrong price. So be patient. Thanks again, everybody. Happy birthday, America.